Today on Sarah's Weeknight Meals, it's all about Southern home cooking. If you're looking for the lost foodways of the Old South, you couldn't come to a better place than right here in Charleston, South Carolina. It has one of the hottest culinary scenes in the country and a tradition of time-honored recipes that celebrate the history of low country life. We found some good ones cooking at the tea room at Grace Cathedral. The iconic pimento cheese. Yes. And then we're going to be making crab soup. Yes. Because life is short, we're going to start with dessert, a Huguenot tort. What is that? Oh, Can I wow. offer you ladies Ooh. some dessert? <laughs> <laughs> then we're off to Crawley, Louisiana. You know, if there's one thing they know here in southwest Louisiana, it's how to eat and how to party. But before that, we're catching crawfish the Cajun way. Wow, look at those guys. So they're all different sizes. For a home-cooked crawfish etouffee. We got the water ball and I boiled them for three minutes. Boiled them. For other people, you, we okay. boiled them. We okay. boiled them. We boiled them. Okay. okay. However you say it, we're here for a good time. Southern Home Cooking today on Sarah's Weeknight Meals. For many of us, Charleston, South Carolina is the soul of the Old South. It's easy to lose yourself wandering its gracious streets and gaslit alleys. It's a foodie town, too, with great old traditions that started long before hot new restaurants came on the scene. Charleston has a wonderful tradition of church tea rooms. Every spring, churches throw open their doors and serve lunch to tourists and locals as a charity fundraiser. Susan Cromwell runs the tea room at Grace Church. We set up out here and also inside, but um, many people eat out here. It's so pretty out during it's the gorgeous. spring. And, and it's the really, whole church gets involved? The whole church volunteers. Wow. It's, so I'm really excited to be making these dishes. I've never made any of these. These are all southern, right? Yes, yes. So we're starting with the iconic pimento cheese. Yes. And then we're going to be making crab soup. Yes. And actually, because life is short, we're going to start with dessert, a Huguenot tart. What is that? A Huguenot tart is a um, dessert that's really not a tart, but it's like a cake. This is what we're going to bake it in? OK, and I'll butter it. You want me to break yes, these eggs? Yes, if you'll break the eggs and whip them, I'll get started by buttering the pan. OK, but how did it get its name, the well, Huguenot? Well, it's interesting because it comes from an Ozark pudding that was a best Truman recipe. Oh, that's Missouri, though. Yeah, that's so it, crazy. it is. And a woman here named it the Huguenot Tart after the Huguenot Tavern where she cooked dessert. OK, so. well, I'm going to I'm gonna beat these, so uh, that's okay. going to make a racket. Go ahead and beat that. And I'll measure the, um, peel the apples and measure them while you're doing that okay. and chop and, the pecans. OK, so we need a cup of each of those, yes. I believe. OK, here we go. So, uh, Susan, what do you think? Does that look pretty good, thick that and looks, lemon color? Yeah, that okay. looks great. Would yeah. you like to go ahead and get the pecan started? I sure would. All right, and we got a couple of these. We have quite a few varieties of desserts uh, each day, but um, the Huguenot top seems to be one of the most popular. So. These look like they were Granny Smith apples, is yes. that right? You like the tart apples? Yes, like the tart apples. Let me see. So sugar, yes. we need about a cup and a, a cup half. And a half. Okay. We need a quarter cup of uh, flour. flour. And then a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, and you want to add the salt. Okay, right away. and it's one quarter teaspoon of salt. And it all just goes in here, huh? Yep, just mix it in. Wow, this is what we refer to lovingly as a dump recipe. Yes, it is sort of a dump recipe. Yeah. That's the best kind. You need two and a half teaspoons of the baking powder. OK. And then I would just mix it with the spatula. OK. I've got one right here. All right. And then this all goes in? Well, about a cup. All right. I think that okay. should be enough. Mm -hmm. and then we just want to go ahead and place it in the pan. OK. This is so funny, we're both left-handed. I know. How often does that happen? Not often. Well, You know, I'm, we're very creative. But you know, it's interesting. Uh, a lot of 
our helpers here in the kitchen are left-handed. So I think cooks are. Yeah. You know? Interesting. I've never thought yeah. of that. Because we're so creative. That's right. Yes, we are. Okay, so now this goes into a... 325 oven for about 35 to 40 minutes. Okay, so let's, okay. let's go... I'll, I'll go ahead and put, pop it in the oven. So it's time for crab soup, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. One of our most popular dishes. Yeah, I can uh, imagine. Well, we start by chopping up the celery and the onion and sauteing it in butter. Oh, okay, so I'll get some butter. Yeah. We need what, about five tablespoons? Yes, five tablespoons. And how much of the celery and onion? It's a half cup of chopped celery and a half cup of chopped okay. onion. So um, let me ask you while we're chopping away. Okay. What is this tea room business? I well, mean, I think of tea rooms, I think of England and sipping tea and having scones. Um, but this is different. Yes, it is. And it's very traditional here in Charleston. And usually it's done in the spring. And um, various churches put on these tea rooms. Some just serve tea and desserts. Many of them serve tea or uh, uh, um, drinks and lunch. It's more of a lunch thing. And um, these are all over Charleston. Our church has been doing it for 26 years. Woo, is that all? Yep. And, Whoa. Um, we are open for 11 days during the Spoleto Music and Arts Festival in the spring. So you so. do this every day? Every day for 11 days, Make yes. massive amounts of food? Massive amounts of food. We average about 400 people for lunch every day. Wow. And who comes? Is it local? Is it local tourists? It's local and tourists. Um, we have people who come every year, and they just love the homemade dishes. So um, while that cooks, so we're going to thicken the soup, right? Yes. All right, yes. so some cornstarch, I think. Uh, and milk. It's just one, one quarter of a cup. Quarter okay, of a good. cup. And then, uh, what is it? It's uh, five teaspoons, which is uh, a tablespoon and two teaspoons. There we go. All righty. So this cornstarch will help to uh, stabilize it. So let's talk about the crab. Um, you usually use, like, these huge... Can crab, right? Yes. It's just one okay. cup of crab. So is this normally a she crab soup, and what does that mean? Well, she crab soup is what it used to be because they would add the roe from the crabs. But today, we just use the pasteurized crab. OK, so we'll just let that cook for half a second. OK, so now we're going to get all the dairy in there, okay. right? Two cups of half and half. OK, and I'll add that right in. OK. So does anybody ever do it with fresh, fresh crab? I mean, like... You know, I, I'm sure there are some people who, if they have a lot of patience and a lot of crab. Two and a quarter of milk. Okay, so... A lot of dairy. <laughs> Alrighty, so then I should add this now. Yes, definitely okay. add that. Not a full roll in no. oil. And you should whisk it in. Cornstarch and milk, mm -hmm. so it spins out so it doesn't clump. And then we just let it cook. That's right. Turn the, you know, turn it on low and let it just simmer for a while. Mm -hmm. All right, so should we season it? Yes, we can go ahead and we'll add the Worcestershire. Okay. okay. Half a teaspoon? Half a teaspoon of Worcestershire. Mm -hmm. All right, and then we've got, this is the traditional seafood seasoning yes. that you all use yes. down here. And it's important. that's a very important Most stuff. important ingredient, yeah. yeah. The one that everybody uses in yeah. the South. I, I did a heaping teaspoon. That's it's supposed to be a teaspoon and a quarter. Add some salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we haven't added any salt to no, this yet. No, we haven't. And then some pepper. Okay. So it simmers for about 12 to 15 yeah. minutes? Yeah. And we're just letting it sort of all come together? Okay, so uh, we have one more thing to make, the pimento cheese. Okay. Shall we get started sure. on that? Sure. You want me to grate this cheese? Yes, please. This that would be eight great. eight ounces? Eight ounces of cheese. And, and what kind of cheese? Um, you want to use a very sharp cheddar. Cheddar cheese, pimentos, and mayonnaise. It's that simple. That's simple. Okay. <laughs> so, but, all right. All right, this yeah. is a half a cup of pimentos. Okay. And what was I going to say? Um, what if you, just for the heck of it, I know I'm, I'm being naughty again. Okay. I, mean, I already asked you about roasted right. red peppers. Supposing you had a couple of different kinds of leftover cheese in the fridge that you wanted to use up. I mean, I'm sure you could, but I, we just find that it, the it's not best is, is just to use a really sharp, sharp cheddar. cheddar it holds up well, mm -hmm. and it just makes a really good sandwich. Yeah. Okay. So, so now, how much mayonnaise? Well, it's just... Um, uh, well, we're going to start with a quarter of a cup of mayonnaise mm -hmm. and see how that works. Um, you just want to add a good consistency to spread. 
So this doesn't look like much, so we do may want, need to add more. Do you want more. me to yeah, stir? Yeah, you do Don't mind. So I bet this would be good in a grilled cheese sandwich. It, it makes a great grilled cheese sandwich. Mm -hmm. And also, a lot of places put it on a cheeseburger. We ah! use pimento cheese oh, instead heaven. of regular cheese. So should we make a few sandwiches? Okay, let's make a couple. Now, do you them. usually make them small or you make them large? Well, you can do either. Um, tea, you know, you can use the cut them into fours mm -hmm. for a tea sandwich, mm -hmm. or you can just cut them in half. So, let's do tea sandwiches. Okay, I think we should. Since we are ladies who lunch. Okay, we're ladies at lunch. Okay, so do you want me to pile it on? You'll yeah, spread it? Yeah, and I'll spread a little mayo. You have to put a little more mayo oh, always more on the mayo. side. Of, of mm. course. This is not the low-cal version. No, it's not. None of, no. none why the, would you? None of the food at Tea Room, our tea room, is very low-cal, yeah. I don't think. Okay, then. Hmm. This is generous. Yeah. Okay. You want a nice thick mm -hmm. And then I will set up the soup. So normally you'd put another little dash of sherry in there? Yeah, when you serve it, we, okay. um, we usually serve it with a craft of mm -hmm. sherry and let people decide, you know, on their own whether they would mm -hmm. like a thing. Would you hand me that yes, knife, please, and I'll there cut that. So I'm so excited to be making pimento cheese because okay. this is one of those iconic things you see all over the South. Okay. So I'll just uh, get our soup here. Oh, this really does smell wonderful. All right, shall we head out? Okay. So should we try one of our sandwiches? Sure. Yeah. Everybody has to try. Yeah. Mm. Yummy. Mm. It's so good. I think the crab soup really turned out well. Oh, Can I wow. offer you ladies Ooh. some dessert? Isn't that it one is beautiful delicious. dessert? But I think, I think well, I have to hold on. But why don't you grab one and join us? OK. Yes, I like that. You yes. twisted my I will. arm. I will. Let's have a toast, ladies. Yes. You said you can hold up. Yes. <laughs> Here, here's a fork. Oh, thank you. you. Life is slow and easy in southwest Louisiana, and here in Crawley, the rice fields of summer are flooded for a second crop of crawfish, the hugely popular local delicacy. Randy Thibodeau is a third-generation farmer who took me on a crawfishing trip on his family farm. They were among the original Cajun settlers. Been here since the mid-1700s, and the reason why they came here because they were expelled or exiles from Nova Scotia because they didn't Expelled? Have, yeah. Really? Yeah. Why? Because they didn't adhere to the rules of the Queen of England. Ah. So most of the French descendants around here all came from Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. So they all spoke French when they yeah, came they, here? Yeah, they all spoke French when they came here. You're a real Cajun. And it takes Cajun ingenuity to catch crawfish. Locals use homemade flat-bottom boats with giant gears that literally push us across Randy's 10,000 acres. We do rice, sardines, and crawfish, and everything is rotated every year, you know. We, we harvest the, the rice in July and August, and now we're crawfishing it. How did you come up with the idea of rotating these crops? Basically, the crawfish was native to this area. And when we would drain our rice fields, we'd actually see them coming out of the rice fields. We would try to catch what we could, but we just captured enough to have a party, you know, <laughs> so. But then eventually we found a way to. thought, geez, let's make this into a regular crop. <laughs> yeah, yeah let's encourage that. <laughs> okay, this is our actual crawfish trap that where, where the, we actually put a bait in here and, and the crawfish come through these flutes and they get trapped in there and then they'll stay, they can't get out that okay. way. So what kind of bait do you use? We use actually, we use a pogey today, so put this fish in there mm -hmm. and we actually put it back in the water and let it set for a day or so and uh, it'll attract the crawfish too. Now, how do you get the crawfish in here to begin with? I mean, actually, it takes a small stock and you put them along the levers. So then they procreate? Yeah, when we drain the fields, and they bury it down, and then when we reflood in October, that's when they come back up. And, and what do they eat? They actually can eat the microorganisms off the rice truck. Four to five months later, between January and April, the crawfish are large enough to harvest. 
wow, look at those guys. So they're all different sizes. Yeah. So what are you looking for in a crawfish? This is what we're actually looking for, this size crawfish right here. You know, you're actually looking for the size of the tail. So because the fat is real good in these tender crawfish. When the pinchers start getting big, they don't have quite as much fat. And how many do you end up harvesting total? We, we, we like to get about, up to about 700 pounds to the acre. The crawfish have another purpose, along with native ducks and geese. Natural land conservation. The wildlife and the crawfish actually help us clean up uh, these fields to start a, for a cleaner crop for the following year. Of rice. Of rice. They eat the weeds. They eat the weeds. All right, so we're, we're going to actually cook these guys up, right? That's right. right. Make a to fit this afternoon. All right, let's head back. We're off to make a hearty meal of crawfish etouffee, featuring Randy's family recipe. And now Randy's going to show me how to make a classic Cajun dish called... Crawfish etouffee. Of course. All right, but we got to start with the rice, <laughs> right, That's right? right. We're going to make rice in a rice cooker? Okay, that's right. Wow, well, you know, I'm rice and pear, <laughs> so I think this is what I need to get. And, and how many cups are we making here? We should make at least five. One cup of raw rice equals three cups of cooked rice. We're making 15 cups of rice? That's right. And this is local no, rice. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's actually grown on my farm. This is your rice. Doesn't get much more local yeah, than that. Right. Okay, and this is five cups. All right, now, how much water? This is where I always get flummoxed. How much water? When you get it this deep uh, over the rice. Okay, so is that, does that work the same for me? I'm gonna say that's an inch. Okay, you're, you're, there we go. Is that good? Perfect. And that's your impeccably uh, clean uh, finger. Uh, yeah, we yeah. boiled that, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so now what happens? We gotta, you have to, this is electronics, so yeah. you're gonna have to show me you program this. You put the lid on. It's not snapped. Oh, we have snap. Okay. okay, I'm gonna move this down. You're gonna set that up. Okay, now it's on. All right. So, so how long does this take? At least 15 okay. minutes cooking, then it takes a f five to 10 minutes just letting it sit there. So while that's doing its thing, we're gonna get the vegetables going, right? Yes. Okay. You got a big old pot there. Yeah. That's cast iron. Yeah, it's huh? cast iron. All right. So we said just a little bit of butter. Yeah, we start that's with two exactly sticks, right. salted or unsalted. Yeah. It's either way, it don't You don't I? care? No. Okay. A little bit of butter goes in. And now you like cast iron because it's even temperature? Right, even, even temperature, and it just get you know, you don't, your food tastes better. Your food tastes better. <laughs> okay, then. All righty. I like that. So we've got three I'm large onions chopped there. That's right. Okay. And then uh, this is about the, uh, three quarters of a cup. I well, measured. Okay, you right. don't measure. I had to measure <laughs> so know. people could make this. Three quarters yeah, of a cup of finely diced green good. pepper. And then we have um, one cup of uh, sliced uh, celery. So. Yeah, finely sliced. Okay, good. And now these three items, three, three vegetables are used a lot in Cajun. Oh, we use it in everything. We call it the Holy Trinity. Really? Yes. So this is sort of like in French cooking, they have mirepoix, which is celery, onions, yeah, carrots. Nice. But you ditched the carrots yeah, for the pepper. That's right. Okay, and this is roughly the proportions you yeah, like them in. That's... So a lot of onions. So here we go. Boy, nothing better than the smell of butter. That, that, that's right. And onions. You use a lot of butter in Cajun yeah. cooking, don't you? Yes, we um, we sure do. It's uh, about your French well, heritage. Yes. So we're going to cook these covered. Yeah. Go ahead, do your do your thing. From what I understand, when you cook that way, all the flavor stays in there. Uh, that's that's yeah. right. It, it, um, How long do we cook these? Probably about 15 minutes. Okay, so now you're going to show me how to peel crawfish. We washed them first. Uh, we got the water boiling and boiled them for three minutes. Okay, I have to, I have to translate for people who don't speak Cajun. Boiled them. For other people, you we boiled them, we okay. boiled them, we boiled them. Okay, okay. Well, and then what happens? <laughs> then, then you want to peel it, so you push it in a little bit and you twist it. You push it in. For, oh, that's a good trick. And then I should try that. Oops, no, I already lost some. I'm fine. That's all right. Oh no, I got it. You got it. Okay. And then you pull it out like this, uh -huh. and then you take out the vein. Oh, okay. It's like shrimp. Yeah. Okay. So when we make the etouffee, and that's actually a really important question. Yeah. What is an etouffee? Uh, etouffee is a, a smothered seafood dish, and this is considered seafood. So, so it's smothered because it's cooked low yeah, and slow. Yeah, low and slow. With mostly the lid on. That's okay, right. Okay, good. Okay, well now we're going to check the pot. 
Damn. Okay, I think we're ready to go. And how do you know? They, they all clear. They're getting clear, you see? It's getting and translucent, yeah. yeah. And you don't want it to start darkening. No color. See, yeah. Okay, what can I pass here? Okay, okay, we need, a, we need the crawfish. Crawfish comes? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Oh, boy. And what we got there is about yeah, three pounds. Yeah, three pounds. Of tails. Tails. And we need to add some seasoning. Okay. So we've got some local seasoning here, yeah, right? Yeah, we have the local blended seasonings. How this. much? I'll let you do it. I'm watching you. I don't, I don't usually I'm measure. I'm watching you. I know this, is, this goes against your name. Yeah. You just throw it in there. That looked like a heaping tablespoon to me. Oh, that's another tablespoon. All right, this is going to be spicy. So no. what's in there? So there's salt and... Black pepper and red pepper. And maybe garlic powder a little yeah. bit or something. And then we also have some fresh garlic too, right? Yes. Okay. Might have to add a little water. Do we do that now or later? I would add a little bit right now. Okay. All right, here we go. You say when? That's good. Okay. So we just let this yeah. cook nice yeah. and slow yeah. for what? 15, 20 minutes. Okay. All right, great. Now I know we have to get a few garnishes together, right? Yeah, yes, onion tops. You call these onion? I call these scallions. <laughs> <laughs> onion tops. Okay, well, you got your own way of doing yeah, things. Okay, it. speaking of your own way of doing things here in Cajun country, tell me more about Cajun cooking. Like, what are your other dishes? Oh, uh, we, we love to cook sauce pecans. Gumbos, shrimp, Creole, you know, catfish, couvillon, uh, you know, all these different types of dishes. And now what's the <laughs> difference between Cajun and Creole? The Creoles use a lot of tomatoes in the different dishes, and we very seldom use tomatoes. Oh, okay. And tomatoes and basil and thyme and stuff like that. We kind of leave that out. Stay away know? from that <laughs> yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know. Very interesting. But, so, so what else makes a Cajun a Cajun besides well, they, the food? They, they're born that way. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's our lifestyle too. You know, we we don't live a fancy lifestyle, but we live a good lifestyle. You don't live a fancy, but a good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so how do you define and, and, a good and, and, lifestyle? I'm interested. Everything is surrounded by food. I mean, every I every time we every time we entertain ourselves, food is involved. You go to the football game, you got to have food. You know, you go you go to a wedding, you have food. You go to a funeral, you're gonna have food after the funeral. All right, so we got a bunch of parsley chopped, and we need a little thickening, right? Yeah, yes. Okay, so we're going to use cornstarch. Cornstarch. The reason we're doing this is because his lovely wife is gluten intolerant. So for those of you out there who are, this is a good way to go. So we need what? Two tables? Two, 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 uh, two of these guys. Two tablespoons. Yeah, yeah. And then just some water. Yeah, just some water. And we're just setting this up. We won't add this yeah. till later. Yes, okay. that's right. And a little bit of water. You say when. Let's try to stir that up and see what I it will. looks like. That's, okay. good. that's good. Here, I'll let you do that. Mm -hmm. It's going to be good. Okay, it's time to check it, so I think it's all good. We put this cornstarch mixture. Mm -hmm. So, we got that done. So, Sarah, now you can hand me the onion tops and, and parsley. Okay. And I'm going to stir that up a little bit. We got the seasoning right. So you think the rice is ready? Oh yeah, the rice is definitely ready because it was steaming a while ago, so. I get that. We just need a little taste right now because we're gonna have our guests coming soon. Yeah, yes. Okay. Oh, look at how perfect that is. I understand sometimes you make this and serve it on a steak. For yeah, for, for special occasions. That does we'll... <laughs> seem a little over the top to me. That's definitely yeah. surf and turf. Here's your spoon. Yeah. Okay. Mmm. That's hot, but it's so delicious. Mm. I love the seasoning. Thank you. Mm. Okay, now that we've got everything ready, we're going to get ready for our guests. I think so. All right.
know, if there's one thing they know here in Southwest Louisiana, it's how to eat and how to party. I'm Sarah Moulton here with Randy Thibodeau and all of his delightful friends. I'll see you next time for some more of Sarah's Weeknight Meals. Okay. All right.